in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I would like to greet the church. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the district uh, uh, committee for allowing me to come and stand and make uh, this uh, presentation. You see, when uh, the elder was introducing our pastor, perhaps uh, many of us were expecting him to be seated close to the madam here. <laughs> But I know Pastor Greek. We were together at the Elder Bay College. Even in class, he was always at the back. <laughs> so I hope uh, Mrs. Greek will just get used to joining him at the back because that's his favorite position. For those of you who do not know Mrs. Pastor Greek, I know she has already stood up. I want to introduce her to you in a special way. Her name is Lerato. You see, we went to Lesotho where we went to do practicals and Pastor Greg was there. So many of the people there asked him to say, uh, who is going to be your, you know, special? And he said, her name is, uh, uh, what is the Lerata in the English? And then uh, they gave her the name to say, okay, if that is the case, then her name is Lerata from the Sotu. So they've been friends of mine for quite some time. Our theme for the camp meeting is well timed. Go ye there. And it is my favorite text that I find in the Bible. I'm not uh, disputing the version that the elder read, but uh, I prefer the King James Version when I read this text. Because in King James, the text says, All power is given unto me. I like it because is is always in the present. Because this power did not begin on the cross, but it began right from creation. Even when Moses asked the women at the burning bush, he said, Who will I say has sent me to Pharaoh? And God said, I am. So in the present. Because all power is in the present from creation up to the by the way, even when Christ was in the grave, he still had that power. Because he says, I laid my life down on my own, and on my own, I took it back. The one with all this power. Says go in there. And then I like the text that comes from Luke chapter 17. If you start reading from verse 11 up to 19, I'm not going to read all that, but I'll center my, uh, my, my presentation on hell on verse 19. This is where Jesus tells one of the lepers who were ten who had been healed of their lepers. He says, Your faith has been made whole. This holistic faith of healing from Christ is the one where this commission. Surrounds. The nine 
people who had been suffering from leprosy were simply healed physically but this tenth one he was healed holistically physically mentally socially and spiritual. So mentally he received mental guidance. Socially he received social sustenance. And then physically he received, he received physical healing. And spiritually he received spiritual reconciliation. So when Christ says, Go ye there, he has given you and me powers in all the four aspects of the Now, last Sabbath, when I was here, we dealt through the Department of Health a, a topic called domestic violence and family abuse. And I promised that one of the five days we are going to talk about the foods that contribute to being violent. I hope by the end of this presentation, everybody will decide to avoid those foods because they will make them violent if they don't. Women, I want you to take care of what you prepare in your kitchen. Because you can actually make your husband very violent. And unfortunately, he will be violent against you. So listen very attentively. Then I'll talk about certain foods that are recommended that can help you remove violence. Domestic violence and family abuse. In our introduction last Sabbath, I spoke about the top priority that was given by the then president, Erwin says at the 1995 General Conference session in Outreach, Holland, the then GC President Robert Falkenberg isolated abuse and family violence as one of six major topics of concern confronting the church. Tomorrow I'll be talking about the present president, his main emphasis in his speech. But here I'm talking about the 1995 General Conference speech by Robert Fenkel. There it, was, there it was emphasized that our denominational pastors and church leaders receive information and education on the topic and that an appropriate response be made a priority. The 1997 Family Ministries Plan Book and this particular orientation seminar are among the resources directed toward the fulfillment. <laughs> Appropriate measures include church, community, and personal involvement in addressing this social issue. Now, what is the impact of food to violence? Because we are talking about eradicating violence. So, we want to look at the impact that food has on violence. And, and mainly here we are only dealing with aggression that leads to abuse. 
First, we need to understand where this power of anger comes from. And that is from the nervous system or from the nerve center. And this we understand that the sensory data upon which we depend to make our evaluations and decisions is brought to the brain via the nervous system and our actions follow the same reverse route. Now, to the next one, 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 so if what the brain does is sent to it by the nerves and what the body does is the brain sending it to the body, that means this part of the body is very important. So when you see a danger, the, the, the nerves, they take the message to the Brain. And then when the, the brain receives that danger, it sends the message to say, hey, take action, hit, beat, or run. Let's take the body. So the health of the nervous system is vital to the function of our stress and other areas of resistance. It has been estimated that there are 1,000 million nerve cells in the human brain. And each of these has connections with at least 1,000 other cells. Therefore, having somewhere in the region of 10 billion points of and so for messages to be relayed from cell to cell, there has to be a chemical and electrical activity requiring chemistry. The components of which are provided by the food we eat and the air we Let's look at an impaired function of the brain, which is the frontal lobe. And this is the part of the brain that deals with perceptions, decision making, willpower, and choices based on ethical and moral evaluation. When there is damage in the area, there is impaired function in the process. Common lifestyle habits have damaging effects and can be classified as chemical stressors, depressants, and irritants. And the, 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 the lifestyles that actually uh, contribute to this uh, classification of chemical stressors and depressants are as follows. In the legacy, this is Such as drugs. drugs. More especially the negative part of the drugs. This can depress. Is your this case that you know that this or case what is the system Accelerate okay, yes, this is and distort perceptions of time, distance, and reality. Alcohol. Which one? Depressant of nervous system acting on the frontal lobe. And other brain centers. causes thickness of the red blood cells. Thus making a slightly circulatory system and affecting the thread like blood vessels. Smoking. It constricts blood vessels. It cannot do your child going to be farming, no matter if that person is a genius in a sense. So making the heart and lungs way harder and contributing to a rise in blood. No, they are the cocaine in the banana. 
Smoking also replaces essential oxygen with harmful carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And the only one that we get no more yam, or The nicotine first stimulates and then depresses the so during the time when you, you, you are stimulated, that's the time when you want to get it. Caffeine. Caffeine. The active ingredient in tea, coffee, and cola drinks, chocolate, and other on the counter painkillers is a stimulant that works together with nicotine. I hope from now on we will remove all tea, coffee, and cola drinks from our refrigerators and kitchens. Chocolate as well. Chocolate. These are related in molecular structure. In constricting blood vessels. Sugar is classified as a fifth. <laughs> Sugar is classified as a fifth. White sugar is also detrimental because it bends or uses up vitamin B in the process. Which means it depletes water vitamin B. Sugar metabolism, which results in energy, requires B complex vitamins, particularly B1 and minerals, calcium in particular. Okay. When sugar, which contains no vitamins or minerals, or refined foods that are in this. When they are consumed, the body is forced to use its own reserves, thus overtaxing and depleting. The body. This is why sugar is referred to as a that information we get it from volume 1, page 107, foods and the healing power. So what is the solution and the nutrients we need? We look at the role of B vitamins in nerve metabolism. While all nutrients have some role to play in cell biology, the nerve cells are particularly reliant on the B range of vitamins for their body. Each has its special function. Strengthening the cell wall the nerve sheet. Combining with other substances in the fluid of the cell and helping with the transmission of the nerve. So, what are these foods that are so important when it comes to blood B that are essential to our body? A diet that provides these vitamins will help to stress aggressive of the body. These vitamins are found in as vitamins again says one of those whole wheat in all whole meal wheat gem nuts and yeast products. Some of the is only one classes in the cook as well. The nuts family they are all good for vitamin B. We can find wheat gem in the shops, more especially uh, the shops like uh, uh, health shops. In which gem Being soluble to water, vitamin B excess is uh, excess to requirement is flushed from the body. 
So, vitamin B, which is in water form, the body does not want any extra. So if we take sweet things like chocolates and sugar, they, for their metabolism, they start depleting that B vitamin. No wonder why when people are stressed, they are depressed, we like eating sweets. That is actually, that is actually wasting up the matter. Finally, let's look at God's view of violence. As we consider how to respond to this issue of non-violence, it is important to review the teaching of Scripture. The Bible describes God as one who hates violence. As we read Psalms 11, verse 5, and Malachi chapter 2, verse 16. God is the one who instructs us to seek justice and encourage the oppressed. That's in Isaiah 1, verse 17, 4, 18. This is God himself who wants that there will be punishment for those who offend the little ones, the children. The God of scripture wants to hear praise and song from the lips of his children and infants. Not cowering. And God desires that husbands love their wives in the same tender, self-sacrificing way that Christ loves the church. Now let's move to the second point. Let's move to the second point. I believe we are doing God's work when we help those who are victimized as well as those who are struck in their role as perpetrators. Those who commit hateful acts that are so destructive. So knowing and eating right food and living a healthy lifestyle can play a very important role to help stop violence. Mind what you eat. Mind what you buy. That's why this shop, you know what it means, shop right? It means shop right Eating. Not just picking anything. Right the right food, not that which brings you God bless each one of us. Thank you for listening to the word of God. Thank you for listening to the word of God.